Mm-hmm. Okay. Starting for the fourth time. Uh, <clears throat> we do not yet have a quorum. We're awaiting Steve's arrival for the quorum, and therefore items requiring a vote. We need to get this off. That's Sylvia. I don't know what. what. Well, I can't do it. I can't be on it. The picture doesn't come. Oh, yeah, it's recording. Here I am. You see what her what she's saying? Her picture she's on isn't there. She's on now. Is she on now? Okay. She's on now. There you go. Okay. Hope you're feeling better, Sylvia. Thank you. All right, so I sent it to all three levels. Steve suggested at the time that we send it to our Bronx, uh, the other Bronx community boards. I don't know if I suggested Artie do that. At the moment, I don't know if Artie did that. So we'll follow up uh, when I get to speak to him tomorrow. Of all the letters that were sent out, I received two responses. Thank you for the letter. We will pass it on. Welcome. We will pass it on to the um, the elected official comment. I've received no comments from any elected official. So I'm a little put out by that. Uh, I thought Julie's name alone would guarantee uh, <laughs> responses. But uh, so I have no idea what the assembly might do. I have no response. No response. I don't think from, that you're uh, I want to add your name. Uh, so that's where we are. So I'm bringing you up to date, which is nothing has happened since these letters went out. Any thoughts or comments on this? And while I'm um, subject for the moment, welcome. You are? Uh, Isan, yeah. Uh, I'm a reporter with the Ripley Open. Oh, okay. Then so be careful what you say. Uh, <laughs> we did not send it to the other community board, so I will do so. Okay. Yeah. Give them a heads up. Mm -hmm. A little cover letter that it went out in either end of June or July. I'm sure yeah, you have the dates. And there's someone waiting. Uh, all the ended. Okay. So, so that's where we are on this. Um, below, I'm going to keep this meeting to two agenda items. The third agenda item, which Julie and I meant to talk about over the summer and didn't. Uh, was the question of uh, awards from the community board committees, uh, which we will talk about and it will be on the October agenda. Sh jumping ahead, well, we can talk about things that are not requiring of a quorum. I sent out, uh, you probably received most of, uh, let's keep Kelly up to date, Every whenever they're ready, Committee on Open Committee. Conflict of Interest. Conflict of Interest Board, thank you. COIB sends out uh, what they call their uh, dispositions. People who have violated the city charter, who got caught, they have a hearing. Those hearings, if they decide nothing was done, I guess it's ignored, but there's a whole we get, we get these time after time of people who did, I would think, on many occasions, stupid things and got caught for doing stupid things. So I share them when I get them. Uh, here, for example, a quality insurance auditor of the State Department of Design and Construction. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds important to me. But this quality assurance auditor told the site supervisor he would not report the 10 issues he had found at the site. If he purchased clothing from this auditor, <laughs> and the, this guy purchased $100 worth of items, 
another site, he said, um, if you pay me $300, I'll give you study notes to pass the test. I mean, Chuck is not here yet, but Chuck uh, was well known. <laughs> How do you prevent specters from cheating, from stealing, taking bribes? His answer was, historically, uh, give them uniforms without pockets. <laughs> so I'm surprised to see it doesn't say the former quality assurance auditor. But he paid a $6,000 fine for his $100 worth of items and his $3,000 worth of stuff, which he did not deliver, by the way. So again, I mentioned on last Thursday night, one of my favorites is still the character who uh, whose, whose subordinates bought him expensive pair of boots. Uh, in fact, there's one like it here. Uh, expensive pair of boots, which he wore. Um, the one here is he wore. The fact is he took the, the gift. That was a violation, and that was stupid, and he had to pay a fine for the violation. But what was stupider is that he then passed the hat around to his subordinates to pay for his fine. <laughs> so he got double whammied, as well he should. So you get, um, I mean, this one is the Board of Ed, where uh, work with temporary housing, took her two daughters as part of a school trip to, uh, to D.C. in a performance at Wicked on Broadway. Yeah. Now, that sentence confuses me. If it's on Broadway, why is it in D.C.? No, it's, there's two things. It was, isn't it two? Oh, oh he, did, he okay. did, 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 and it should be able to two it. things, yeah. Uh, and those tickets are not cheap. <laughs> well, I am sure. Uh, they find it twelve hundred dollars as a, as a proven financial hardship. Um, again, and this happens obviously all the time. It was Chancellor? Thanks. Uh, before him, the one just before him. That the one just before him. That Chancellor was fined for taking his wife to uh, some kind of game or show. That was just for kids. He shouldn't have gone, and his wife shouldn't have gone. And so people show the chancellor of court, they're going to get caught. The microphone on, Marty. With my microphone on, raise your hand if you say yes. Mary Ellen um, has a... Really low. Yeah, okay, but there's nothing... No. Okay. He can't. Um, don't press that button. Is that better? Raise your hand. Can you hear me now better? Yes. Yeah. Sylvia, can you hear me more better? Yes, I do. Better. It's better. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> it's fine. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go through all of these. I, I, the copy you received doesn't have the highlights, but uh, they speak for themselves. Gentleman, Zoom gentleman, uh, took a decast car to go to work and come back with. And the following day, he didn't go to work, but he went to all these stops along the way using the city car, and they charged him me hundred and fifty dollars. Oh no, a five day suspension. That was the big one. So these are all fun. Now this strikes me as a person who should know. The torts division of the law department should know what the law is. Use of his email account, but only a few times, and he paid two thousand dollars. Oh, sorry, the now former chief investigator. <laughs> now, I only send the cover sheet, which has this information. And you receive this information, but the full accounting of the hearing 
And what was said and who was there and the real names, you can have that. Obviously, if I get it, it's public information. So if anybody wants them, I'd be happy to forward it. Your files. And I beat you to it. And now it is 7.51. Steve has arrived, as promised, and we now have a quorum. So we can go back. Welcome, Steve. Thank you for doing both these the same night. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm going to jump back here. And then we'll get down to our conversation. Um, waiting committee approval of the June 3rd, 2024 minutes. I hope you've all read it. Um, just to note something I said Thursday night at the orientation for new board members is that I hear, and it's not correct, I can't vote for the minutes because I wasn't there. The fact is, if you read the minutes before we vote and you have any problems, you ought to ask a member of the committee mm -hmm. or the chair, what was this, what did I miss? I don't like it, or I do like it, but the fact is you should come prepared to vote, mm -hmm. yes or no, on the minutes. And if everyone who wasn't there doesn't vote for it, it'll never get passed. So, so if you review the minutes, I think you said you had a couple of things in the minutes that bothered you. Not bothered me. It's just a typo in number six, sub four, the city law depart Lord department. It should be law. I checked with them, and they consider themselves the Lord. Yeah, 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 no change. Uh, that's really it. That, that's the only thing. Right, is there a resolution to accept the minutes as amended? Yes. Second. Second. All those in favor? All right. Unanimous. Minutes have been accepted. Steve, we talked about the letter uh, to which I've not received the resp any responses. Uh, so I'm jumping here ahead just to keep you in the loop. We discussed the letter that was sent out. Keep going. It's there. Keep going. There it is. Yeah, Julie and I sent out. Um, double checked. Did not go out to the uh, other community boards, but will tomorrow. The yeah. cover letter. Just Bronx or the whole city? Oh, yeah. That's a good. Kind of for everybody, but I mean, I'm not trying to add administrative. Bronx, we. Uh, I mean, I, as I pointed out, I knew of this because the uh, city, uh, it's in the city club, the city, the city club, club, right? Yeah. Because the city club must have notified all community boards, so they must have had a heads up. I used to be a member of city club, but they don't yeah. know that. So, uh, we don't we we send, send it to all community boards. We can send it to all citywide community boards if you want. Uh, click of a button, that's all? Yeah. Be my guest. Okay. Become famous. <laughs> okay, now we come to the core of tonight's meeting. Now, it, I sent a cover letter to all of you trying to bring you up to date on this concern. Uh, just a reminder, uh, I'm sure Kelly knows this all, but just as a reminder, when the open meetings law, not this one, when most previous invented the idea of extraordinary circumstances. Um, we pondered it for a while. It took us a long time to come up with the. There, there were two things you had to do. One, a public hearing to uh, to agree to have telecommunications and how to handle it. We did that. We passed the resolution. Laura got that done long before we were prepared to even be involved in it. But it would pave the way if we, if and when we were ready, we were on record as having had the public hearing. And the second thing, which was not connected but required, that is, we've got to come up with the procedures 
on how one could um, obtain extraordinary circumstances, giving them the opportunity to participate via telecommunications, without, uh, obviously without being present. It still required a quorum in person, it goes back to the Senate bill, still require a quorum in person, but anyone who has extraordinary circumstances could be called upon and participate. Did that for a year. As a committee, we felt that uh, it was not uh, working out as intended. It became more um, burdensome than helpful. And so we as a committee voted to get rid of it, to recommend getting rid of it. Our meeting in May or June, the full board voted to drop EC. So we no longer have EC. The issue at hand, which was made more of a concern, is that there are board members, and I'll mention two situations, not bothering with names. The one was a broken ankle, and the other was spinal surgery. Uh, those two were obviously unable to participate at board meetings, could not attend. Uh, so the question was, should they be allowed uh, ADA, the law, the second, <laughs> not the, the most recent, oh, most recent, the one before was changed mid-flight, and we didn't even know about it and learned quite uh, by accident, which is surprising, but they adapted the law so that anyone who was identified as having under the Americans with Disability Act, having a disability, that person or persons would be allowed to participate via telecommunications and be counted in the quorum. That's, uh, that was a major difference. We basically ignored that initially, but as time moved forward and we got rid of EC, the question then becomes, we had the two I just mentioned, and there are others who have medical reasons why they are bound by their doctors not to be able to attend the meeting. So the question becomes, for our purposes, what is ADA? Anyone who has attended one of uh, Christine's uh, uh, COG uh, sessions will know this question constantly comes up. It came up with EC, it came up with ADA. Uh, it's entirely in the community board's hands. Now, the law suggests, I'll go back, I want Steve to be first. Um, the law, open meetings law, Article 2, any member who has a disability as defined in Section 292 of the executive law where such disability rendered such member unable to participate in person at any such meeting location where the public can attend. Uh, it's kind of a vague definition of ADA other than it tells us to go to section 292. When we have asked over and over again, why do we, how do we define ADA? We get two answers. Answer number one is you don't need to uh, invade privacy by getting doctor's notes, and B, community boards make the decision. It's not very helpful. So under the open meetings law for the purpose of this section, disability shall the meeting defined in this section, which I just, is right here. New York Consolidated Laws, Executive Law, uh, Section 292, disability, and I advise you to read it and interpret it in your own way. However, that all provisions of this article dealing with employment, well, the key to me in this here is, I, I, did I die again? Uh, yes, you hold it till it comes back on. Anything. I'm back. <laughs> um, the key phrase here, dealing with employment, which I believe, and I'm not a lawyer, which I believe is the key element behind ADA. 
which is to protect the rights of those who have physical disability or physical or other disabilities. And so the key to me is protecting their rights, not protecting the employer's rights. So the employer must do certain things under certain conditions. Now, one last thing, under the federal law, Steve was nice enough to get for me. Um, paragraph 1C, shall not apply to impairments that are transitory and minor. A transitory impairment is an impairment of an actual or expected duration of six months or less. So someone who cannot attend for a broken ankle will be mobile three, four months down the road. This would not qualify under ADA. Someone who is, uh, uh, what was the other one, spinal injury, injury I believe, uh, surgery, I believe she is now out and about. No, she's not. Okay. So it's close to six months. But the point is, up to this point, that person is unavailable to the board. There's no EC and there's no in-person, so that person is lost to the board. Um, so that's where we are right now. Now I'm going to go back here because Steve sent me this email in July. Oh, yeah, I guess that's it. There are a couple of things. Uh, there are two yeah. slides. I attached the slides. I'll expand them if you want me to for any particular reason, but I will. Fine. I mean, whenever you want to, I'm happy to just give it. I've thought about this now for months and, and a couple of things. The first is that um, the idea that the way that this works for employees, as Marty said, that is the framework, even though obviously the ADA applies to people who can't get to Yankee Stadium because there aren't proper ramps and, you know, or businesses and all that. They're very wide-ranging law and a watershed, you know, in human rights in our country. Anyway, but with respect to employees, an employee who uh, wants essentially um, an accommodation, the normal rules that apply for their job, and here we're treating our board members like employees even though they're not. It's just the framework, right? You know, I mean, it would apply to the staff of the office, but here we're really talking about the board members because it's just the only way to understand it. So if, if, if they have what they believe to be a disability, uh, they come to the chief executive of the agency, which in this case is Julie, and they explain what their disability is. And there's no concept of privacy here, just to be clear, okay? You, the employee must disclose whatever is necessary to make their case that they need an accommodation. There's no, no, no concept of privacy. Now, that being said, no one's suggesting making a list or disclosing to the public or the board or anything like that. That wouldn't be appropriate. But in terms of the employee or the board member in this case, explaining to the head of the agency, which in this case is Julie, that they need an accommodation and what they would, they have to you know, explain it. Now, we're all friends, we're colleagues, so. I'm not saying that there needs to be any sort of hearing, but yeah, you would have to explain it. There's nothing private about that. You're asking for a benefit, which is an accommodation. So the next step in this normal rubric is that the employer, in this case the board, proposes an accommodation if possible. So for example, if an, uh, one accommodation could be that, uh, you know, maybe the, the volume on something could be turned up. Right? And that's easy. It doesn't cost anything, probably, or even if it did. If it's de minimis, that's not a problem. And then the employee, the, the board member could hear the proceedings better or something like that. Um, and that, you know, that would be a happy result, right? The person has a disability. The hearing loss isn't going away. If they can't themselves amplify with a hearing aid, I'm wearing hearing aids now, then, and they're amped up, um, then you know, maybe there's some other accommodation that can be granted. But the six month provision, for example, part of the definition, is aimed at avoiding a broken leg kind of situation. And it's really not up to us, this is my view, it's not up to the board to reinvent the wheel, to imagine what a, what a just society would be, or what a great, it's just the ADA is the ADA. This is not new, this is a little, we're a little teeny little island in the sea of, of ADA challenges for everyone in any organization. And so 
I don't think that it's necessary for us to publish anything or vote on anything. No one is not the little idiosyncratic New York State reaction to COVID, make EC what you want. You know, it's none of that sort of free form jazz. This is a law which applies to the entire United States. And I don't think that we, the LRE or the board officers or the board is under any obligation to make any kind of list or guidelines or anything. Keep in mind, too, that with EC, which is an unfortunate precursor to this because it really had nothing to do with each other. With EC, it was accordion-like. We were experimenting. We were seeing how it worked. Is it abused? Is it too many people? Is it affecting our ability to get a quorum? Uh, ADA is, these are immutable conditions. This is not so common. I mean, this is not a, how is it going this month kind of thing. This is going to be something that for most people is going to happen uh, only if it's an immutable characteristic of their situation, either for life or arises at some point. It doesn't usually go away. It's not going to be very common. I don't think it's going to be a big impact on the, which should be, not be a big impact on the board. And if, for example, the examples you gave, Marty, I think one was a sort of broken ankle. Um, whether that recovery period is two months, four months, six months, the person can very much still be a participant in the board's activities, especially nowadays with video conferencing. They can get stuff through email. They can keep up to date. And if that means that we're short one or two people here and there for a committee me meeting or a board meeting, that's just Could I ask a like question? We've always dealt with. Yeah, before could you I, do, Sylvia. Could I ask a question, uh, Before Marty? you do, Sylvia, one second. Yeah, I'll let you, but I want to make two points. Uh, I left out... Uh, <laughs> I left out two things. Number one is, I remember now what they were. I was pondering while you were speaking. Thank you. Um, no, no. Issue number, I'm going to have to come back. Sylvia, go ahead. Um, my first question is, did you get a response from Tom LaKenya? You said you had uh, written a, a email or a letter or whatever uh, to him. Yes, and to you have a copy. I, I added it here, didn't I? Yes, you did. Oh, I couldn't have because I wrote the letter after I sent these out. Mr. Tom? I think you yeah, didn't. Hi, Tom. There it is. You're right. Okay, so I sent Tom a letter which I, I don't know if you have copies. It's in the super agenda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke with Tom today. He was does not have a response to his the legal counsel for the uh, our president returns tomorrow. And he promised that earliest I'll get a response tomorrow. I told him I needed it tonight. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. So that okay. answers your first question. Right. The second is a statement. Um, I, I've now had two um, medical uh, situations arise suddenly. Uh, both uh, required um, hospitalization. Uh, I was refused the Zoom on the first one because it was deemed by you uh, to be less than six months. And uh, the one that I'm dealing with now, I have no idea how long it's going to take. The doctor did not say anything about any uh, 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 time frame because he sent me home and thought that I would uh, be uh, better um, recuperating at home rather than in the hospital. So uh, in those cases, and because the Committee on Open Government does not take a stand. And I don't know what Tom is going to say. And I certainly don't fall under ADA at this point. Then uh, after 16 years of being on the community board, uh, you're telling me that I can't participate. I find that very upsetting. 
And I think that there should be uh, either no uh, regulation or um, take each case separately or uh, just being absent is not going to uh, fix the uh, situation for the patient. So that's just going to add stress to them. Uh, we need something else. And, and I just want to make that clear. In your mind, my two comments. I mean, the note for you. You got to hold it till it comes back on. Hold it. I'm shaking. <laughs> Not coming, huh? Maybe we're over um, uh, my two working comments. this comment, issue. Comment number one is we passed, the board passed a resolution. Board passed a resolution in June, and until our next board meeting, which is Thursday night, the resolution is effective, and that is we take the liberal, 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 liberal. List <laughs> approach possible, so that anyone who fit into any of those categories, whatever they are, including you, will covered. Um, but we, under this resolution, need to have something to present on Thursday. Whether it's we need more time or it's a, a, a replacement resolution, substitute resolution. Well, I, uh, I think... The second issue I wanted to raise is that, and I obviously I had uh, Sylvia in mind, but there are a couple of others who are the doctors uh, advice, or um, find a word stronger than advice, I were told not to leave the house for whatever reason. Um, now, there is something I picked up here that if you have an intermittent illness, that can be understood. I've been using uh, um, what are we using an example? Broken ankle or certain no. COVID. No, no. Um, well, you, you can't leave. leave. No, you can't leave yeah, the right. house. Right. That's what I was suggesting. Right. You can't leave the house. Got it. Okay. Uh, muscular dystrophy. I was thinking is another disease which impairs people seriously, but it is intermittent. And so you can have a couple of good weeks and a couple of very bad weeks. And so if that person is identified, we'll deal with how we identify, that's allowable. Even though it's, it's just, it may be five, ten years worth of illness, but it's intermittent. Yeah, sure. So the accommodation is that Are when you... Are you of lupus? I wasn't, but I imagine that fits in the same category. And this can flare up. Right. This can flare up myasthenia gravis. There's a lot of, you know. I can't think of the one I've been using as an example. Um, MS? Yes, MS is what I've been using as an example. We can have good months and then suddenly get hit and you're disabled, totally dis dis <laughs> disabled. Too many words, two words up here. Um, so the six-month rule may not really apply to under a doctor's care when you have something. Now there was one person we made uh, we made exceptions for under EC who is now more ill than before. And uh, we made and did not have access to a po proper phone, couldn't be seen on, vi on Zoom, um, but that was under EC. I mean, it's a lot of things you have to take into account. A specific illness over a period of time is the easy one. An ADA designation by the doctor is an easy one. But my personal feeling is that um, since COG refuses to get involved, 
um, my personal feeling is that we should allow for there are certain people with certain needs that should be considered under this uh, rubric. And I don't want to go further than that at the moment. Any else want to add any comments? We're allowing for life events to happen. That's basically what we're saying, <laughs> Which right? Which has nothing with to do with ADA. ADA. Right. To do with but I think, too, you know, it's a... I agree that we should allow life events to happen, right? I will use myself as the example, right? It was a period of time last year where I was granted EC because I had surgery. It wasn't six months, but I had I had surgery, and it was something that, you know, he dealt with. And I still participated in meetings, right, to the extent that I was able to do so. However, there were times where I didn't count towards quorum, so there had to be a quorum. And I think that really is what we're trying to, you know, work through also, right? Because I think we should have give people the ability, if they're present on Zoom and they have, I want to use the term extraordinary, but they have a life event, right? Life happens and we have to figure out how we deal with it. On the community board, just like those of us that are still part of the working society, um, when we go into our offices, you have to figure out how you're going to deal with a situation that arises in someone's life. And I think that that's what we're talking, we're speaking to right now. If somebody were in a situation like you described, where uh, you, you pretty much it sounds like for several months, you know, you couldn't physically go to meetings. Uh, then I think the result here, because we're down to only having the ADA to fall back on, at least that's how I understand. Then what would happen would be you would make use of all the technology that's available and you would know what was going on and at committee you could participate, uh, board meetings at the discretion of the chair or whatever, whether it's the board or the committee, you know, participate. You know what's going on. You can't. You might not be able to vote, and you wouldn't count as quorum, and the world wouldn't come to a standstill because that was the situation for three weeks, three months, right. and that's exactly where I think but where we're at. There are there have been instances where committees and or the board at times did not have quorum because there were people, and and then it impacts some of the business that we need to conduct. Um, thinking of the staples, for example, when we have to give people a response or the uh, public safety who's always having well, to, the, to the, board. the board, it has to go, go to, to board, it has to go to the board. But if the board doesn't have quorum at a particular point in time, either then we're not talking we're about right. a threat to quorum of the board. With the t these should be so unusual, mm -hmm. so isolated that we really are not living in the EC world. The worst thing about this discussion is that people cannot get out of the idea no, no, no. of EC, because EC was very flexible and we were crafting the best right. way to solve things and we were given a certain amount of leeway, I think, right. under the state law, the executive, whatever. I guess all I'm really saying is that I don't think that we need, regardless of the resolution that was passed last year, I don't think that the LRE should create a cottage industry of trying to explain to the world and the board what ADA right. means. It is unnecessary. No business does that. No business, no agency, nothing. They just, the ADA is what it is. And if cases get disputed, they get resolved either with ALJs or, you know, courts or whatever. But nobody creates a, an industry out of this within an agency. And it is not, why should this board, <laughs> you know, take it upon itself to say we're going to have like, you know, an ADA resolution, we're going to have ADA guidelines. It just doesn't, it really doesn't. I mean, that's really my ultimate message. If someone cannot go to a board meeting, right, because of a condition that they've got, and they apply for the board, and, and that comes up after they're on the board, it sounds really harsh, but there's not every disability can be accommodated. And if the most important thing that you can do to be on a community board is to physically show up and participate and channel your, you know, people in the community. It could just be that for given that job qualification of being so central to being on the board, 
that if you can't leave your house permanently, then that you may not be able, until other changes are made in the way that we function, that may be that, that you just can't be on a community board. I mean, you know, not everybody can be an NBA basketball player and not everybody, you know, can do everything they want to do. I know it sounds really nasty. I hate to be the bearer of this news, but that's just the way it is. And again, I think this is going to be really limited and, and very isolated. So I don't think that it's going to be the kind of a big deal that, you know, 20 people or 30 people a month getting EC designation. I don't think mm -hmm. it's, it's that pervasive, but I do think that we need to have a some type of plan in place to not only to benefit the community board, right, but we're also saying that um, the board chair, then the individuals would go to the board chair, and the board chair would make a decision, right? Absolutely. Right, but then... What guidance are we giving the board chair? I'd like, to, I'd like to add two thoughts. Thought number one, I should have written it down. Point number one is that um, it is, we could, the only difference between EC and ADA is being counted in the quorum. Um, a thought we could re we could reestablish EC in a way that's so narrow that only specific people uh, would fit into that, as defined by the chair, um, and therefore not having to have to deal with this. And the second issue is the law. Not a lawyer. When a person comes to the employer or human resources and says, I have this problem, and human resources says, fine, here's an accommodation. Not six months, not six years, just goes ahead and does it. So the six-month requirement does not mean that an employer can't make an accommodation after two days or less. So my concern is it really doesn't need to be a six-month requirement for an accommodation to be made. No, that's not the way the six months works, Marty. It's against six the months, employer. No, no, it's not about that. It's a six months is not a waiting period. Six months is I have a condition which ain't going to change. That's, it has it's nothing to do with waiting. It's against the employer. The employer must do something. If I claim ADA status and I qualify under federal law, you must do something. No, you must make an offer, and that offer may not be sufficient for that employee to function. Okay, you must make an offer. Right. However, there's no requirement that I meet the other conditions. You may want to make an accommodation without going, without my passing go. I have a problem. I don't fit under ADA, but I have a problem. No problem. We'll fix it for you. We'll raise the volume for you. Don't have to go through ADA. Julia, Julia you had a thought. Just a few things. From the ADA, Stephen, um, you mentioned that there is no privacy with the ADA. There's, some, there's a limited amount of privacy because we cannot ask them what medical condition they have. If they just advise us that um, they have a condition, that's what That's Marty, incorrect. Dr. Marty, Farrah and I went to um, that session, and the, the lady who held the conference told us that. We cannot ask them what they have. If they come to us and say that they have an ADA. I'm, I'm telling just telling you, whoever said that doesn't even know have any idea what they're talking about as far as what I'm hearing. I mean, not even the beginning of it's it. It's from the city. Well, the, I can get you her the, information. The employee is the person who has to kick it off. They, they I'll have tell to you go. what they reported to us. Okay, okay, well then just say and no one needs to show up ever and just, you know, no, we'll always get our quote. I'm making my remarks from when you spoke because I didn't, because when you said that, I'm thinking, no, that we were specifically advised, do not ask them what they have. Um, that's just in regards to the privacy. And in regards to the ADA, um, 
I agree. We should not define what ADA is. So therefore, I believe that we should reestablish something. I like your, your title, the life events, to at least let board members or physically or even mentally cannot come to a meeting to be allowed to participate. We have three board members currently um, who have been long-time members as a board member and as a community member who is now a board member who physically cannot attend. Um, for various medical reasons. And some of them may be able to come back eventually. So why are we limiting the work that we're, you know, we signed them to do? If they can come on Zoom, years ago we didn't have the opportunity to have Zoom. We have a new equipment that we could utilize to our benefit. And to just not utilize what's going on in today's world, I think it would be foolish of us. So that I think that a new resolution should be drafted, not an ADA, because I agree with you, Steve. We cannot, we can't even agree on privacy and non-privacy. You get your information from one source. The city, we got our information from another source. So forget about ADA. I'm just talking about affording board members to let us do our work um, and to define it specifically. The last, with COVID, everything was new and it was, it was done, I thought, brilliantly, but we learned okay, what are the loopholes in the last resolution? And narrow it so that the chair really doesn't have to make a decision because I would be very liberal, I'll be honest. I would be liberal because to me someone's health comes first. You may get another chair, let's say you see the chair, no one's coming <laughs> So I would say make the resolution so that there is no leeway. Um, and, and let us do our work because I also think of people who are shut in. And, and what about a shut-in who wants to participate on the board? You said if you can't physically come to a meeting, yeah, right. don't. No, I don't. I personally don't believe that because we have a lot of people in this world who need to participate, and they may not be able to do it physically. So if the if the borough president starts, you know, appointing people who just they get to that door and they just can't get out, but they're brilliant and they have a lot to offer, why are we shutting people out? That's for the future, but I'm talking about for now. I believe that we should draft something so that, especially the current members that we have now that have a lot of value to give the board so we can make our quorums. You've been frustrated in committees when there isn't enough quorum and you want to you know, move forward. Yes, a quorum doesn't make or break it. It won't make or break our board. But if you're a committee chair and you put in a lot of work for a committee, you want, it, you want the work to get done. And if utilizing Something new that we have in this world today. Why not? We have to change with the times. Ms. Mary, you haven't spoken at the meeting. I know how you feel. Yeah. How I feel. The law is the law. It's we're we're not we. It's um, it's it's nice and um, and good and kind uh, to uh, say there should be a policy. That write down exactly what's what how you can not have to show up for a meeting but still be counted for quorum and vote. It's very nice. It's very kind. It's very generous. It's very. It's it's it, what's the law? That's my question. What's the law? We have the open meetings law. We have quorum. We have you, you have to be there. That's it. What are the exceptions to that? We came to ADA. That's what we're talking about. ADA. We're not talking about rewriting ADA. We're not talking about adding layers on top. Well, maybe that's what, where the conversation is going. Add more layers on top of ADA. Very, very nice, very kind. Very, but we have to whatever the law says. Whatever the law says. That's it. That's that's where I'm. I am. I don't think we should be. Um, uh, I think it's a mistake to start creating. Um, what would it be? What am I trying to say? Creating a, a system or definitions uh, to allow or not allow certain things to occur or happen. That That's not how we got here. We got here because EC was voted down for reasons that we don't even need to go into. It was not good. I think it was a disaster, but... Uh, but we came across ADA. So now we have ADA. What does the law require? Whatever that is. We're not going to say what the law requires. 
The law requires what the law requires. That's it. And there's, there's somebody in the federal government or city government or corp council that will tell us and should guide us. ADA says you must do this. ADA says you can't do that. That's it, and follow that. Otherwise, we're creating a new system, which I, I, I think that's a slippery slope. I, we'll be back to EC again. And it's impossible to cover all the situations that could occur. Um, I don't know. We have the law. Whatever the law requires of us, that's what we should be doing. I hate to oversimplify, but that's it. With the city council, when they have the members who are not able to attend, but yet they attend on Zoom, are they allowed to vote? I have no idea. I'm sure they're not. Because that's something that we could I have no to idea. The House of Representatives allows for passing, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, I can give you my vote. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yes, not. Yes, she did. <laughs> Well, I'm I sorry, know, I know the council they it's American meet. history. It doesn't happen. That's why when people American can't make it to the Pelosi. they can't make it to the chamber and they're rushing to they make it to the chamber and, and if they're not there or they're campaigning, they're, they, they shouldn't show up at the committee. And, I mean, yeah. but again, that's not our that's not determining what we no, are. No, but so. I know I know the <laughs> council when they have meetings, their members sometimes are on Zoom. I don't know if they're allowed to. They, they speak, they give a report, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure if they can vote. And that's not ADA. That's, you know, I, we're I said, talking I, no, about... I, so when I spoke, I said, forget about ADA. Forget let's, about let's ADA. Let's move on, mm -hmm. because we're mm -hmm. not going to make mm -hmm. one ADA. I said, I'm not talking about ADA. I'm talking about make something that's more 2025, 20, you know, for the mm -hmm. year, moving forward. Mm -hmm. We have to move forward with the times. So I would, I would ask two things. When the council meets, when they give their reports on Zoom, do, are they able to vote on Zoom? And I think that if, you know, that would give you some sort of guidance. Um, if you contemplate moving ahead with something, I think would be good. And then um, also ask the bar president, well, I don't know if the bar president's office, if they have any ideas or thoughts on that. Well, they should. I would think that they would have. Corporation Council of the City of New York should tell every community board what they must do and what they can't do. But they don't. That's it. Well, that, that's, what they, that's what we should and, and that's why we have... No, the LRE really shouldn't be out front here. We that's shouldn't be. That's idiotic. Guidance where the court well, council and the borough president. Well, I think it's that we can't let a board member vote, and they want to participate. So let everyone. Say, so why do you let everyone? Because, because you have to be specific. If you have a medical condition where you cannot. But you don't even know what that medical condition is because you don't want to ask. So it doesn't. There's no standard. There's nothing. I will tell you. So I find myself in a situation. <laughs> I don't think it's tough. <laughs> it's everybody. But I think the comments that were made and the sources we should be pursuing uh, indicates that I should be requesting another month really board under the current circumstances, which is Julie says they're permissible for them to participate. That's where it is. We'll come back next month, having done our homework, and check with Corp Council. Gotten an answer from the VP's office, even though that's um, Corp Council would override that. I want to point out <laughs> on that very issue when I was requested by Sylvia that there were two committee members who did not, could not participate via Zoom because could we find a method through which they could participate? Cog told me no. Our president told me no. And I finally found someone at the, the law de department who said to me, or wrote to me, that there was some wiggle room. Based on that wiggle room, we agreed to let those two participate. I am going to go right back to that very same person, presuming 
he's not been stuff been taken out of his office. The FBI is. Oh, that. <laughs> so I am going to uh, contact him and ask for a committee vote to extend the current resolution and then ask for a board resolution to extend by one I month. Opinion. I just read opinion. Cancel opinion. I'm not going to get one. I guarantee. I'll write the letter tomorrow morning. I guarantee it won't have an answer by Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I might, but I don't think we will. Okay. They have to get that approved. So even if I contact COIB, I generally get an answer from my friend down there. I want to check with a few people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Marty, so, make. Oh. Go ahead. By the way, I don't know if you can see me on the screen. I know you can't, but since I'm not facing in that direction, I don't see your hand. And see, it's a good I thing that you call out. I'm sorry. But I still, you called out. Go. Uh, one of the things that uh, comes into my mind is that what happened to me um, two Saturdays ago is not uh, does not have a medical um, term as a uh, illness. Uh, it's a physical thing. And uh, I don't think that Corp Council or uh, the city charter or whatever covers every single medical possible, uh, you know, um, unusual uh, procedure that, that happens to a person of my age. And uh, I don't know if that will cover anything because this this is something that popped up to the surprise of the doctors. So uh, I, I don't think you're going to get an answer on it from the uh, city, if that's where you're going. It has to be a little bit more open, and uh, it, it has to be something that our board decides to do. We're not making the uh, regulation for the rest of the community uh, boards in the city. Uh, we, we're not uh, writing a new legislation. Uh, it, it is just an accommodation and I'm not sure that it is worth all of this uh, many, many years of uh, addressing it because this thing that I have is a fluke. So, but it's real. And, and all we're can't... going to do, all we're going to do is ask for an opinion. We'll make the decision how to use that opinion. Okay. And I'm waiting for two opinions. I'm waiting for to hear from the BP, and I will write to get a letter off tomorrow to the Corp Council. Okay. Or the Lord Council, whichever you want. Lord Council, yeah. Okay. All right, so I had on here on the screen a recommendation, but I'm withdrawing that until next month if you want to vote to extend status quo for another month. Any thoughts? Any motions? Anybody here? I am I am fine with extending what additional I would like to withdraw the resolution passed in the spring <laughs> that, that plucked this one little seven word part of a sentence out of you know, the uh, statute and created an industry. But, but maybe the, that's out of the, Honestly, we didn't even have to read about it. It would just be people coming to you and asking for a decision about how it should be handled and you would just decide. But I don't like that, because let's say you're That's your job. Year. That no. doesn't matter, so it's your job, and next year, three years later, yeah, then, then someone else. else. It, it, wait, you think that's different than the way every agency in the city runs, every company runs? Someone new takes over, it could be a different well, decision. Well, then for that, then let's put in a resolution stating that if you have a medical condition, you are allowed to. But a, with, uh, a major medical condition. 
Just an ADA recognized disability. That's they were back to we're ADA. What's the law required? Where do you want to go? It's not an ADA. But then we're not talking. The no, the no, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying then just put in a. a if, if Steve is saying that it, it would be my job, then I would say, okay, then let's do a resolution stating um, if moving forward, if you have a life event medical condition, you can participate. So that goes back to the idea of going back to EC under specific circumstances, specific. defined medical circumstances without the ADA. Which we, which we never, given a year of fooling around with it, decided that we did not want to be in the business of this loosey-goosey. Mm -hmm. Well, it won't be loosey-goosey. It will be medical condition preventing you, not a sneeze, but a medical condition preventing you from participating in meetings, plural. Sneeze. Another person can't leave the house. Well, somebody has to adjudicate that, and it's not, I don't feel well tonight. Question. Does this, I'm assuming the city, or well, maybe I shouldn't preface it this way, has some type of handbook or something like that, an employee handbook, a managerial handbook, an administrative handbook that we can look to to get their terminology for, let's say, short-term disability or something of, to that I think effect. it will refer back. Okay. It's like the stuff that Marty took okay. screenshots of and, and put up. It's going to get back to the idea that an employee comes forward to the appropriate officer mm -hmm. of the agency and says, I have a medical condition, which I believe warrants a grant of, a, of, of what's the word, um, accommodation Probably. under the ADA or whatever the analog is. Mm -hmm. And and then the agency says, we can't help you because the job is to be able to sing at this octave. And if you can't, we don't know of any machine that would allow you to. And this job title or whatever is to sing at this octave. And so we're sorry, we think you've been great, but you know, this is not the job for you anymore. And that person can, you know, bring up whatever action and say that's not fair, that's not right, that's not what the law means, I'm entitled to more. Or the agency says, Well, just we have a great idea. We actually have a position where you only have to sing to this octave, not to this one, and you can take that position and I think everybody will be happy. And that that's how the world works. But that's really you know The world what I mean? is changing, Stephen. What? The world is changing, though. We have to change with it. No, I'm just telling you what the law is. I mean, I'm not telling you what would be a nice way to live. I'd like to I'm bring just this discussion to a conclusion, even though there is no conclusion. And I will back to our recommendation, spend another month in deeper study. This letter I wrote to Tom will be written to the law department with appropriate modification, asking if something exists and what their opinion is. What's on, what's, what is the legal position that the city is taking on this? So I'm asking for a resolution, which I can't make as chair, that uh, we extend this status quo for another month. No, no, I, I said it. I said it initially that I think we should extend it for a month. I mean, 30 days is 30 days. I mean, it goes by. I mean, we're, we're blinking. Yeah. Res, you have to eventually. We have to come to a resolution. We can't just. Well, I say I really I say that there's nothing necessary other than any other agency deals with, which is I understand there's a resolution on the books already, which is what's complicating things. But can't we revoke or, or rescind that? Well, I would like to, and then I would and I would I would right. not like for the LRE to have carry this this burden of creating a, a, some you know edifice mm -hmm. of of regulations that made up. I think it should just we should be like every other agency, and if someone comes forward with an ADA request that either it's accommodated or it's not and you move on and I mean like you know and honestly I, I there have always been times when for a variety of reasons people get stuck studying for grad school or something and they stop coming to meetings and they you know it's just part of what we've always dealt with life circumstance change it doesn't have to be medical this that but it just and and you know if you know someone has an issue 
and like the thing you talked about where things flare up, yeah, that could be something where someone isn't throwing in the towel but is going to hope to continue, and maybe that is an appropriate you know, ADA accommodation for a medical condition like that. But and, and, and you're not reporting that person to the borough president's office because they missed four you know, board meetings in a row. That's the discretion that the chair and the district manager have always had. So I don't think it's necessarily a, like a completely new world. But if you're going to start saying person X who is not at the meeting has for a quorum, even though they're not visible, they're not there, I mean, that just gets to the heart of how the open meetings law was supposed to be its own improvement on accountability and, you know, that we really would know who in the community board is voting on something. Before because we didn't have the ability of Zoom before. We had, we had people who were absent for months at a time before and they were reported absent. Why should we jeopardize a possible community board member's place on the board if, if they're reported absent four months in a well, row? Well, use your discretion. You don't have to get rid of them. You don't have to say to the borough president's office, That's this right. person isn't behaving, this, they're not pitching in. It could well be that that person is still doing behind-the-scenes work for the committee. They're, they're looking in yeah, on... but they the want to participate. They, well, the, the members who well, are right now want to participate. They want to be counted as a quorum. They want to participate. That's very and, nice. And we, we may have a borough president. We don't have one now, thankfully. But we may have, let's say, if you were the borough president, and if you're a paper guy, you will look, oh, four absence, get rid of them without even listening. That's not the way it works, as far it as could, I know. It could, though, but it could. It well, all that's depends. Not, it's not worked that way for the last 40 years, as far right, as I know. Right, and we didn't have Zoom before for the last 40 years. I'm just, all I'm yeah. saying is there's a, a lot of discretion that you already have. That you know. I'm going to second it. Can I ask a question? I don't have that discretion anymore. No, no. Can I ask a question? Mary? Nobody else has a hand up, too. Can I ask a question? Sylvia, he said Sylvia first and then Mary Ellen. No, actually, so Mary Ellen there. has had her hand up. Let her speak first. You're a member of the committee, you're you're of the committee, committee. Sylvia, and the chair just uh, it wants you to ask uh, okay, a question uh, okay, first. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, one uh, hook that I have on my personal uh, situation, um, aside from mm -hmm. whatever regulation that Community Board 8 wants to make, but I am chair of the Education Committee. Uh, this will have a uh, total um, effect on my uh, being that. And uh, therefore, I feel a, a little more, I think, um, in jeopardy of being removed than, uh, say, a member of a committee. I don't know if that's true or not. Are you seconding the resolution? Are you seconding the resolution? I don't even know what the resolution is at this point. That's the advantage of VC. <laughs> there you go. The resolution is to extend the re to extend. I made these word resolution twice. The motion is to extend the resolution presently in place, voted on in June to enable all those who fit into this, enormous, this amorphic category to participate through the following month to October so that this committee can do some more research and get some more legal opinions. I vote for that, yes. All right, Mary Ellen. Okay, uh, before, I, <clears throat> before I ask my question, on another, on another um, committee, I raised my hand to ask a question when they said any board members want to ask a question and a member of the of the community went before myself. But um, being as it may, um, about does any of the other boards, um, how does the other boards feel about this um, ADA or whatever? How do they handle if somebody can't come to the meetings? Are they following the same ADA rule or... That's why I sent the letter to Tom Lacania at the BP's office waiting for an answer. But we're going to wait for his answer, and I'm going to get the letter off to the law department and get their answer. And then I can be more specific. Thank you. And 
Sylvia is not a member of the community. She's a member of the committee. Oh no, no, I'm talking about on another. I said on another, on another, on another committee. You it's been inconsistently applied in from committee to committee. Just want to clarify. Motion's been made and seconded. Take a vote. All those in favor of extending, asking the board to extend the current resolution for one more month. Identify yourself. Still be Alexander in favor. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's unanimous. Five zero. Okay, um, so we're through with this subject for the moment, for the next 30 days or so. <laughs> okay, City Council spreadsheet, I'm not going to spend time on that. Uh, you probably received a copy of the spreadsheet. I warn people not to print it out for the sake of printing it out. It is extensive. And you'll be sorry after you printed it out that you can't even make sense of it without Scott typing pages in various places. However, uh, I go to the City Council legislative website and I download everything there in the current session that is being considered. Then I sort it based upon, you know, first then I, I identify color code uh, which uh, which member of the city council that represents us has sponsored this? The column says sponsor, so, so their name is a sponsor. I color code. Uh, sometimes it says number of people uh, who support it, endorse it, whatever. I don't deal with that at all. I used to highlight those I thought was important until it came a point where someone felt that something slipped by that the committee, a committee should have considered and didn't, even though it was on the spreadsheet, even though it was on the spreadsheet, but I never highlighted it. Doesn't mean anybody ever read my sheet, whatever. So um, just a heads up, if you have nothing else better to do, read through it. Chairs of committee, I hope, are looking at it there's no guarantee there either. Any old business? Any new business? I raised something. Okay. Um, and I, I, I take the blame. I haven't done any research in this at all, but I think it's something that maybe the committee should look at and be able to show to the board. The mayor created a charter revision commission. They have completed their work, and there are a series of referendum that are going to be on the ballot. I, I know some, one of them has to do with uh, like public safety, that because I read an article about it. There are others they, that maybe board members would be interested. I mean, and we're here for the community. We should be able to to put information out to the community. And again, I don't know what they are, but I'm sure they're important. I'm sure they're of interest. And um, so there you go. And and I apologize. I didn't do any research on it, but is I know that. Is there only one set of charter revision proposals? Or yes. is there okay. when, when, just, when, the, when, just the mayor? Yeah. When, when, yes. The okay. mayor cool. set up the charter revision commission. They finished their hearings. We didn't, we weren't aware of any of the hearings. So. Um, uh, that's when we could have participated, Marty. You remember? Um, now that now that they voted on it, we can't have an opinion uh, or vote on any of the proposals. So we can publicize what the thing. Yeah, about. exactly. But should they? Will they be in the voter guide? You would assume. I have them here. Oh, good. No, uh, you don't have. We don't have to. But well, I haven't read them, them, so You're I'm embarrassed the by that. Uh, Karen. After I mentioned them at Thursday night's meeting, because I didn't know either what, what's in it, right. I didn't know that it existed, Karen sent them to me. So there are two attachments. I'll show you the first attachment. I think it catches your eye. We'll talk about it. I'll open the second one. 
Or just that they voted. I mean, that's the executive summary. I don't clean. St I, I don't know. Yeah, but the first ballot question: Commission proposes amendment to expand and clarify Department of Sanitation's authority to keep the city clean. Well, sometimes, <laughs> these things, sometimes these things are important, you know. Yeah, and and once again, that this is editorial language. Right. It doesn't tell you what what they're. Okay, I don't. This is blah blah. This isn't. This doesn't look like uh, legal language. It's just right. The second ballot question proposes an amendment to improve how the city assesses the fiscal impact of proposed local laws and addresses. Public safety. A third question: The commission proposes an amendment to promote public input and deliberation and consideration of local laws respecting public safety. And the fourth ballot question: There were four. Oh my God. Commission proposed amendment to improve the city's capital planning process by promoting transparency. Okay. Um, fifth and final ballot question proposing amendment to update several charter provisions to improve city government operations uh, pertaining to women and, and minority. My, women uh, yeah. Uh, so, so again, this, th these are not the proposals. Okay. It's, it must be it's, the second one that right. I have. Okay. So. Is my but so there are five. There are five. It's my impression, for what little I remember, that this is a battle between the mayor and the, the, mayor council. And the council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that is what Increasingly so. But but still, they're going to be on the ballot for the voters to vote on them. So maybe it would be good to. Yeah. Um, oh God. I'm, Does that look like valid question two? It still looks like blah blah. That's not legal language, is it? It could be what's given to the voters. Is, is right. It's supposed to be it, right. It should be plain language, right? They should have put them in plain language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, just the language that I read is so plain generic. You have, really have no idea what they're doing. Okay. But. Okay. Um, but I raised you know, it. As far as open is, is concerned, next month, in addition to rehashing this, <laughs> uh, we want to. I'll meet with Julie, and we'll have some kind of presentation discussion on um, awards given by committees, and maybe a final report on what the assembly has done, just for the fun of it. This year we had a meeting uh, in August to go over the calendar. Um, as you are aware, next month is one of the months that's problematic for us. Uh, it is People's Day is our meeting day. Uh, Veterans Day is our meeting day. So I selected alternate dates. So these are the future meeting dates if you want to mark them down. But they will be in the minutes. So they'll be in the minutes. There you go. So it's a late October meeting for us. Well, that that would yes. be right. question because those are two those meetings are two weeks apart. Mm -hmm. So would it make sense to eliminate, eliminate one? <laughs> right one of the meetings? Let's say the November meeting, and then we can convene again in in December because then that would give us about five weeks between October and December. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a decision we can make. Granted that there's, if, unless there's some pressing matter that needs to come before the It's a decision we will make as we adjourn the meeting on the 29th. Then we'll know whether we need the next meeting. Not that we. I was told when I was asked, I can't believe how long ago it was. I was told when I was arm twisted to become chair of this committee. <laughs> that the history of the committee, well, the history of the committee, the ethics committee met if they decided to be ethical. Beyond that, they met once a year, maybe, maybe once every three years. Who's your immediate predecessor? Me. So that was the, that was the, the loosey-goosey days, meet once every two years. No, no, no. I'm no, kidding, no, I'm no, kidding, no, I'm no, kidding. No, no, no. It was when it was Irving, Irving. or the one before, the they used to meet a half hour before the board meeting. Do you remember that? Oh, They'd be sitting in the corner, I and that was it. the Law, Rules, and Ethics Committee. So they'd meet like a half hour, an hour it was before only the. the ethics committee was the law rules. No, at that point, when Irving was chair, really? Yeah. Okay.
And I can recall. But they used to be in the corner. Do you remember that? Before my time, I recall heard only that. one incident in all of my years on the board where it came down to an ethical discussion on someone's behavior, mm -hmm. which was totally unethical. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to transfer that at the moment. I remember. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, that person has passed away. Mm -hmm. So it is now uh, 901. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> there was a motion, but I can't get a second. Return the meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Sylvia, are you voting? Mm-hmm. Yep. Are you paid for the journey? You can stop the recording. Okay. okay. Meeting is now adjourned. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, more. More. Okay, you are still. You are still. And go to stop recording. Julie, Julie, who is That's what they told us.